Now considered the capital ship in the U.S. Navy, the submarine has grown from a military novelty to a weapon system with tremendous strategic importance. With more technology per square inch than any other weapon system, nuclear submarines represent the state of the art in technology and continue to make advances. To understand its modern significance, let's look into the history of the nuclear submarine and its progress to the present. In 1900, the United States Navy began its submarine fleet with the USS Holland. Named for its designer, John Holland, it carried a single forward torpedo tube, batteries for submerged operation, and room for seven. World War I gave witness to the destructive power of the submarine. Early German U-boats enforced a policy of unrestricted submarine warfare, sinking more than 11 million tons of Allied shipping. Great Britain was nearly brought to her knees by Germany's submarine blockade. Although the U.S. submarine force saw no action in World War I, its top brass saw the value in navigation from below the surface. Though the submarine was not effective against principal naval battle units, a new strategy evolved. By waging the war against vulnerable seaborne commerce, trade is brought to a standstill. As an ocean power, the United States saw the value of a submarine which could patrol alone in search of enemy shipping or in support of surface fleet operations. To this end, they developed the S-boat and the fleet-type submarine, capable of unescorted, long-range patrols. In World War II, the Germans again practiced unrestricted submarine warfare against the British. After America entered the war, Nazi subs attacked the North American seaboard, sinking an appalling 681 ships by July 1942. The American submarine fleet was busy in the Pacific, conducting the blockade against Japan. The silent service performed brilliantly, sinking more tonnage than all other naval and air units combined. Japanese losses were 1,178 merchant ships and 214 warships while only 52 American subs were lost. One patrol of the USS Tang, under Commander Richard O'Kane, sent an incredible 30 Japanese ships to the ocean bottom. Several innovations helped the Allies fight the war. The snorkel allowed safe battery recharging, and the wakeless torpedo created a greater element of surprise. But no innovation was more important than sonar, the use of sound waves to detect and range objects underwater. Sonar is the platform upon which all anti-submarine warfare, ASW, is based. Once a sub was detected, the destroyer escorts would attack with several weapons in concert. Depth charges exploding at a preset depth to rupture the sub's hull, and torpedoes equally as deadly to subs as to surface ships. Air support would always be a necessary element in effective ASW. Baby flat tops, freighters converted into landing strips, provided two fighter planes, which would locate the sonar contacts and direct the destroyers with their gunfire. This coordination of forces provided the firepower which would break the sub threat and win the war of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The atomic bomb would change forever the face of submarine warfare. Nuclear scientists harnessed the power of the atom in the nuclear reactor. The isotope uranium-235 is suspended in a controlled chain reaction called fission, releasing heat, neutrons, and radioactivity. Not needing any oxygen to promote the reaction, its benefits were immediately recognized by submarine designers. Under the leadership of then-Captain Hyman Rickover, the father of the nuclear navy, development of the first nuclear sub was begun. An elegant design, the reactor would provide heat for a steam generator 
which in turn powers the turbine and the propulsion system. Construction began on the Nautilus, and 18 months later, on January 21, 1954, First Lady Mamie Eisenhower sent her down the ways. Underway on nuclear power, the Nautilus immediately set several speed and submerged endurance records. Her first core of uranium would propel her for more than 62,000 miles over the next two years, most of it spent underwater. A conventional submarine would have required more than two million gallons of diesel fuel. Her most notable achievement is the navigation of the North Pole on August 3, 1958. Submerged below the polar ice cap for 96 hours and nearly 2,000 miles, the Nautilus crossed from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic, gathering more scientific data on the Arctic Sea than ever found before. The strategic importance of nuclear power was becoming more self-evident with each accomplishment. The Skate and sister ship Sea Dragon would rendezvous at the North Pole, experimenting with multi-ship operations beneath ice. Arctic operations would become central to the forthcoming strategy of nuclear deterrence. The Silent Warriors will continue on Discovery Sunday. Survival, Tuesdays at 8 Eastern on the Discovery Channel. asked if we would design a new tire for the extraordinary NSX. We responded very quickly. Yokohama, where Acura turned for ultra-high performance. When Pontiac set out to create a dramatically different minivan, they had two basic design objectives. Ultra-efficient air management and just plain looking good. Transport the Pontiac of minivans. But wait, the innovative transport gives you yet another way to manage the flow of air. A unique built-in inflator pump that helps you meet new people and make new friends. Transport the Pontiac of minivans. We build excitement. So I start watching the Discovery Channel. Thought maybe I'll learn something. Then I see they have this guide, you know, to kind of help you figure out when everything's on. So I order it, real easy. Just 1-800-TDC-8343, and I charge it. And now, a few weeks later, it's here. I mean, look at this thing. It's a magazine, TDC Magazine. I open it up, and there's this grid, which is great because I can see the whole week at a glance. So I just circle the shows I want to see. And look at this. It's a complete description of every single show. And check this out. These photographs, gorgeous. There's even articles by famous authors. Amazing. All I expected was a program guide, and I get all this? What a bargain. Hmm. I wonder if there'll ever be a swimsuit issue. Call now to order your TDC magazine and receive 12 monthly issues for only $14.95. That's more than 50% off the cover price. Or tell the operator to bill you later. Visa and MasterCard accepted. Set your sights on adventure. Set your sights on romance. How's about you and me taking off all our clothes and going swimming? Set your sights... Everyone knows about you. ...on a hero. Matthew Quigley. Matthew Quigley. Matthew Quigley. I wanted to hire the finest long-distance marksman in the world, have I? Tom Selleck. Quigley, Down Under. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, October 19th at theaters everywhere. The Silent Warriors now continues on Discovery Sunday. There are three basic roles for attack subs. As a hunter-killer sub in ASW, forward attack and reconnaissance, and protection of task groups and convoys. The attack sub is the most effective ASW weapon. It avoids sonar detection by other subs by taking advantage of ocean inversion layers. A sub can become more quiet by diving deep since cavitation noise decreases with depth, giving it the advantage of stealth. The most valuable aspect of ASW is the sub's sonar capabilities. Passive sonar is used to locate the target at long range. 
To gain an accurate reading, the sub decreases speed, minimizing the effects of flow noise created by hydrophones moving through water. Active sonar is not used at long range, since it would immediately give away the hunter's position. Closing in for the kill, active sonar produces readings for the fire control computer, which in turn directs vector and coordinate data to the designated weapon for firing. Make tube one ready in all In its primary role, the attack submarine is a symphony of dedicated, highly trained men in concert, creating the most deadly force in the sea. The attack sub's primary weapon is the Mark 48 torpedo. Wire guided with both active and passive sonars, its accuracy is deadly within its 20 mile range. A new technology weapon gives the attack submarine another dimension of power. Submarine launched cruise missiles, SLCMs, would project the sub's range of attack far beyond its torpedo range. By flying above the ocean with coordinates supplied by a third party, the payload is delivered expediently and with no wake. The subrock missile, an anti-submarine weapon, travels at supersonic speeds to release a depth charge, either conventional or nuclear. Launched from a standard 21-inch torpedo tube, the solid rocket motors propel the warhead up to 35 miles to be guided through its descent by an inertial guidance system. build and place on station a fleet that will never attack first, but possess sufficient powers of retaliation concealed beneath the sea to discourage any aggressor from launching an attack upon our security. In response to the Soviets launching Sputnik in 1957, the United States scrambled to develop the ultimate in nuclear deterrence, the nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine. Under Admiral William Rayborn, the Navy produced in record time a solid fuel rocket which could be fired from a submerged position. The result was the George Washington class utilizing the Polaris A-1 missile. By the end of 1961, five submarines of the George Washington class patrolled the North Atlantic and Mediterranean, each carrying 16 of the 1,200 nautical mile missiles. An improvement on the A-1, the Polaris A-2 slightly extended the missile's range to 1,500 nautical miles. Five ships of the Ethan Allen class were commissioned by 1963 with Polaris A-2 missile. Totally redesigned, the Polaris A-3 missile became operational in 1964. Improved solid fuel, a lighter casing, and an efficient use of space extended the range to 2,500 nautical miles. This impressive increase in range over the A-1 and A-2 missiles gave the ballistic submarine a far larger patrolling area, minimizing its vulnerability as a deterrent. The Lafayette became the mainstay of America's nuclear deterrent. Its Polaris A3 missiles introduced maneuverable re-entry vehicles, MRVs, effectively multiplying the missile's firepower. Packing 16 Polaris A3 missiles, each with three 200 kiloton MRV warheads, each of the 31 Lafayette-class subs carries nearly 10 million tons of deterrent force. Unlike the attack sub's mission, to seek and destroy, the ballistic sub's mission is to evade detection 
and avoid contact of any kind. It is a silent deterrent. The Poseidon missile surpassed the Polaris A3's range to 2,800 nautical miles and could throw up to 10 MRVs of 50 kilotons each. In the light of continued Soviet missile buildup, Congress approved the development of the Ohio class of ballistic missile submarine in 1974. It is the largest sub in the American Navy displacing an awesome 18,750 tons and measuring 560 feet long. But its gigantic size belies its mobility, quietness, and speed. The Ohio class is the nation's most survivable weapon system. This giant submarine spawned several innovations that revolutionized how submarines are built. Rather than create the massive hull first and then build the interior, a new modular approach was taken. The hull was built in sections on a grid system of rail tracks and transfer cars. As the interior of each hull section was filled out, it would then be welded to its neighboring section. This technique made installing major components easier and reduced total construction time. The Silent Warriors will continue on Discovery Sunday. It's back. It's more frightening than before. Stephen King's epic, The Stand, experience the terror of 350 pages you weren't allowed to see before. This $24.95 hardcover is yours for just $7.95 when you enter the chilling world of the Stephen King Library. Imagine an exclusive collection of horror. Pet Cemetery, The Shining, Christine, The Chart Toppers, the books that became blockbuster movies. All in original hardcovers at just $14.95 each, all with a cancel anytime guarantee. But if you want the terror to last, we'll send you a new volume, including King's new releases about every seven weeks. Enjoy each for 10 days. There's never an obligation to buy. Possess the stand with no risk. The Stephen King Library, where the master is coming back to haunt you. Call 1-800-352-7700 now to get the stand. Keep it and pay just $7.95 plus shipping and handling. Future volumes will come, one every seven weeks, each with a 10-day free trial. Keep only the ones you want. Cancel any time. This Oldsmobile got 16 highway miles a gallon and went zero to 60 in eight seconds. This one gets 30 miles a gallon and gets to 60 in seven seconds. Isn't technology wonderful? This is a new generation of Olds. Take to the skies. Watch Wings. Tonight at 11 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Is this really how you want to spend every weekend? Now there's Ari, a Space Age polymer that you can apply wet, smoothly on, smoothly off. Just look at that Ari shine. You'd never do this to your car, but with Ari protection, those burn marks just wipe away. Deadly hydrochloric acid eats through that piece of metal, but with Ari on the job, it can't harm your car. This car is straight from the junkyard, but Ari restores that showroom finish. And Ari has hundreds of other uses. Use Ari on your boat, camper, and in your home. Ari cleans, protects, and outshines the competition. Why spend a fortune on these things? On this special offer, you'll get two bottles of Ari, enough for eight cars. This special Ari shine that restores your dashboard, upholstery, and leather goods. And this amazing chamois that soaks up stains in seconds. You'll receive all this, an $80 value, for only $29.95. Here's how to order. To order Ari for only $29.95, call 1-800-533-4900. That's 1-800-533-4900. Or send check or money order to Ari, P.O. Box 508, Cresco, New Jersey, 07626. Ari comes with a 100% money-back guarantee. So call 1-800-533-4900 now. The Silent Warriors now continues on Discovery Sunday. With a complement of 133 men and patrols longer than 90 days, Life aboard the submarine has to run as smoothly as possible. The ship is easier to maintain than earlier ballistic submarines. Officers and enlisted men alike enjoy excellent food, exercise, medical care, comfortable bunks, 
quiet study, and even privacy. It must be remembered that the men who serve in the silent service sacrifice a great deal to ensure our country's security. The Ohio class is the most sophisticated machine ever built. Each man on board has a specific task to perform in unison with the rest of the crew. In order to perform, he must be well trained. Training has always been a high priority for the submarine force, not only in matters of operations, but also in matters of survival. The submarine is inherently a dangerous machine, and should a mishap occur below the surface, the crew must be prepared to escape. This technique for escaping from depths down to 300 feet, known as blow and go, involves constantly releasing air from the lungs on the ascent. The get wet chamber prepares submariners for the flooding emergencies where teamwork is critical. I'll stop. I'll stop, At every level of command, there is more training to undergo. There could never be enough training to prepare for what can go wrong below the surface. An enemy submarine can be the most fearsome threat for surface fleet forces. As it is for submarines, sonar is the heartbeat of ASW. The hunt begins with a contact on the sound surveillance system, an array of hydrophones on the ocean floor. A land-based P-3 Orion, equipped with a magnetic anomaly detection system, MAD, checks for slight disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. It is integral in ASW to monitor environmental conditions in which the contact may seek cover. Carrier-based S-3 Viking jets will continue beyond the range of the P-3 Orions. Destroyers maneuver to the estimated location of the threat, its helicopters equipped with lamps dipping sonars. We are closing at max sonar speed uh, to get within passive detection range. How soon can we expect to gain passive detection? ASW officers aboard the destroyer estimate the present location of the threat based on the last sounding. Uh, sharp indicates 30 minutes after that, Captain. Very well. Believe I hold submarine contact. Hydraco quality, sharp and strong. 
Go ahead and put it out. All right. ATC observed B scan. All station sonar. Sonar has active B scan contact off the starboard bow. Classification possible sub low. As well as With the threat located, they proceed to track the target. Had this not been peacetime, an anti submarine weapon would have been deployed immediately. Sonar supervisor, target tracker sees a shift in Doppler. Sonar supervisor. CIC sonar, we now see the target with a down Doppler indicating the target is opening. Hotel 2, Charlie 4, my searcher contact correlates your listener, over. Hotel 2, Victor, contact strong, maintaining, out. Sonar soup, I have no echoes. Okay, give B-scan back control. Shifting control to B-scan. TDC B-scan, I have control. You still see it? I sure don't. Inform combat. Bye. All station sonar, sonar has lost contact. Hotel 2, Charlie 4, lamps has contact. Buoy number 15 is hot. Over. Buoy 15 reported hot on the bearing 068. Scan contact off the starboard bow. Because it is so hard to maintain the contact, the problem of effective ASW is one of numbers. So many resources must be dedicated to tracking one sub that to guard an entire coastline is nearly impossible. As opposing subs become more quiet, the problem grows in complexity. Fast, quiet, and evasive, the nuclear submarine is the ultimate weapon. Until a radical breakthrough in ASW technology occurs, the attack submarine will continue to rule the oceans, and the ballistic submarine will remain the most survivable deterrent. Green Alert, a symbol of commitment, only on the Discovery Channel.